Hey, so welcome back to the channel. It is a nice, quiet Sunday at the shop today. And so uh, I'm gonna get a little building in and uh, I wanted to pick up where I left off on this uh, fixture. And I'll show you what my plan is here. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I already have a square line that I use for the wing off of, uh, off of my uh, straight edge here. So I'm just gonna put this board in there and then that'll allow me to uh, put my fixture against the fence here and I'll just shoot a couple blocks in to hold that and then it'll it'll go pretty quickly because uh, um, what I've done is I've pre-marked all the locations um, of where each of my members are gonna go each of these guys right here and then on the outside I do the same it's just like where when I need to see where I want to staple, um, I just mark them inside and out. And then when I get to the outside, I've got a nice reference of where I need to be shooting those staples. So, and that will make everything go really quick. Um, and I picked up uh, picked up some tight bond yesterday. So, and so it'll just be brad nails, tight bond, inch and a quarter, uh, brad nails. And um, yeah, then this thing will get dry and. Um, We'll be moving on to the leading edge, which is a pretty exciting time. And I think after we do this today, I think the next thing that I need to do is uh, I actually have to verithane the whole inside of the uh, leading edge. And that means I'm gonna, I kind of need to sand some things and there's some epoxy drips and things that I need to resolve. Um, and then I've got some uh, plywood, my uh, root and tip, uh, plywood is um, just a little bit oversized on the top side. I've already sanded the bottom because it was going to be sitting flat on the table. So I've got a little sanding to do there. And um, yeah, then we'll get uh, we'll get the Verithane on. And then I think uh, the other thing I can do today is probably bolt in my uh, wing attachments um, because I've got that all ready to go. That's been Verithane for a couple weeks now. And uh, yeah, so let's get this thing built and then we can move on to something else. All right, we'll get these in order. Uh, that's number two. And uh, that's number three. And that's number four. And that means that's number one. So, which is the one I did all the figuring on. I did want to mention that uh, it's really worth it to do the layout work ahead of time because it just saves so much time when you get ready to put something like this together. Uh, rather than trying to get things square and all of that while you're up here on the table, um, getting all these square lines ahead of time just really simplifies it. So just lay some glue in here.
<clears throat> just makes it that easy. It's all good now. Um, this thing should be nice and square still. I can just take it out of the way and kind of clean up, uh, just clean up the glue on my bench and um, get my wing back up here. And then we will uh, we'll keep moving forward. So yeah, while this box is drying, we'll be in uh, we'll be in great shape. So all right, cool. God, I love when things go quick and easy. All right, it's all about the setup, right? All right, so those are all uh, squared away. I just kind of sanded them uh, on this top surface just to make sure everything was nice and smooth. Uh, transitions well, the, the tip and the root uh, feel really good to me now. So, um, so the next thing I have to do is I actually have to go along the, go along the leading edge here.
got to go along the leading edge. And I have to varathane all inside here, all the uprights inside here, uh, top and bottom uh, of this RS4 member. Um, get all of this sealed up. I'm trying not to get it on the top of the spar which makes me wonder if maybe I shouldn't just go ahead and tape that off. Uh, eh, not worried about it. Um, I can try and be careful. And we'll get all in here. And then, uh, and then we'll be ready. Uh, we'll be ready when we get the first piece of uh, sheeting out of the jig um, to put that on. And we start with the tip right here. Uh, this will be the first piece that we'll add. And what we do is uh, we put that plywood formed, it's semi-formed, it springs back once it comes out of there, but you just kind of put it on here and you mark all of your locations for these. You tape those off on the plywood, then you verithane the inside of that, and then you peel all the tape off and then it leaves this area, this area, this area. It leaves all that exposed wood so that you can uh, then you put epoxy over all of that exposed wood and you epoxy on here. Put this piece on and I'll use some straps. The plans say to use rubber bands and sticks. So you put a stick here, rubber band around it this way. Um, I haven't decided what method I'll use yet, but I'll, uh, I'll figure that out. <clears throat> and uh, for now, we just want to get this part, uh, get this part taken care of. So, all right. All right, so that's all, um, uh, that's one coat and it's uh, soaking in really nice. Um, just gonna check, the, I can kind of see down here. Yeah, it's, uh, which is what I wanna see. This bare thing is pretty thin, so um, I didn't really have to thin it um, to get it to soak in really well. I'm using the uh, um, Varathane Ultimate Spar Urethane clear gloss in this can. Um, I intend to, last time I built a uh, fabric covered plane, um, I used the aircraft finishing systems uh, eco bond, which I intend to do again. So um, that gives you uh, plenty of options when it comes to what type of, a, uh, in other words, I don't have to worry about um, my attachment method, um, uh, attacking whatever I'm using to seal the wood. So, uh, yeah, super friendly system to work with. Highly recommend it. Um, but um, you'll get to see, uh, I'm going to drag you through all that. So you'll get to see all that later on. All right. Um, cool. So I'm going to let this dry. And uh, what time is it? Yeah, while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and prep the, uh, uh, prep these sheets. So, gonna need the table saw. All right.
uh, 17 inches wide, so um, right on 17. And you know, if you're scratch building, which um, I hope you are, um, it's just, I mean, it's so gratifying to, uh, to be able to build something from a set of plants. And uh, even when it gets to this stage and you're seeing the form, um, it's pretty, pretty amazing, great feeling. And uh, plus you learn a great deal along the way. And this particular table saw, you know, when I was looking for it, I liked that it was a worm drive, um, which makes it uh, run really smooth. And uh, I liked that it was extendable um, because when you cut something like this, it's 17 inches wide. You can you just lock the fence in and then I use a piece of wood because that way the the thin material doesn't try and slip underneath this fence which it would try and do um, especially if it's over here somewhere it wants to ride underneath it rather than against it and from the side when you look at this except for right here it actually all of this is dropped below this surface so um, and as long as these are above this surface they kind of help keep it from riding up as well so it works out great I'm sure there are much slicker more expensive tools that do the same thing but this works perfect for me so I'm all good there and uh, yeah so let's uh, let's cut these three pieces And of course, we're gonna cut the uh, we're gonna cut the three for the next wing because that dimension won't change. All right, so now we can actually cut, uh, we can cut them to size. And uh, if you remember, the, the, I'm gonna cut the center one first. And uh, the center one is 45 inches, um, center to center. And uh, so we'll start with, uh, start with that one, which means we'll be taking, uh, we'll be taking three, um, I think three inches, but uh, we'll double check it here to make sure to see if there's a some of this was kind of frayed on one end so a little bit ratty on this end um, excuse me um, This is actually 48 and an eighth. Um, Forty-eight and an eighth. So we're gonna cut it to 45. All right, so this one is actually 48 and an eighth. Um, we're gonna cut it to 40, 45 inches, so I'm gonna measure uh, from here and uh, mark it at 45.
And then just so I can get that mark on the end there. I'm gonna grab my square real quick. That'll just help you line it up. So, all right. Oh, I was gonna say, um, you know, if this, uh, if you are gonna scratch build, and uh, you know, you don't want to spend um, a lot of money on a table saw, and you have a table saw, I say spend the money on the blade because um, the blade makes all the difference in the world. And when you're scratch building and you're, you're ripping and cutting this much lumber, um, from the very beginning when I started cutting quarter inch square for the ribs, I can tell you that I'm already on my second blade. So that's how picky I am about the cut. I can tell when it just starts to, just starts to lose its edge. And uh, when that happens, off it comes, get a new one. So um, it just makes, it makes life so much easier. All right, so we are unplugged and I'm still gonna use, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a gap underneath here. So I'm still gonna use my board um, to make sure that uh, my material can't slip underneath there. And if you have a little bit longer board like this, it actually gives you a little more runway um, out here and out there, which also helps keep the board stable um, as you're pushing it. Um, all right, so let's get her lined up here. And I just wanna check one more thing, make sure we're square to the edge here. Yeah, we are nice and square, and I, I must say, Aircraft Spruce does a pretty good job of uh, of making sure um, that they're sending out material that way. So, uh, and again, I'm looking at the outside. One curve goes this way, one goes this way, so I'm looking at the outside one to uh, get this lined up. And that looks, looks good right there. So let's cut it. Now when I do the uh, when I do the the root piece, uh, you have to remember that the uh, this is on a three degree angle. So so my longest distance is here. This would be a shorter distance if I accidentally measured it from here to here. So you want to make sure you you take your longer distance. And what I'm gonna actually do for these is um, instead of making them um, exact, I'm going to allow myself. So that's 46 and three quarters to the middle.
Yeah, 46 and three quarters to the middle. And I'm actually gonna allow myself an extra eight because if it hangs over a little bit here, that's not a big deal. I'll just uh, maybe take out the flush router or just hit it with sandpaper and a block, whatever. Um, but uh, um, just once the, once the uh, tip one's on, then the middle one, then when I do this one, I just wanna make sure I don't end up short. So, so I'm just gonna allow myself an extra eighth of an inch. I'm gonna go to 46 and 7 eighths, and that will give me an eighth of an inch hanging over. 46 and 7 eighths. Let me write that down. And then let's measure the tip one as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna allow myself an extra eight. So 47 and a half. So I'm gonna go 47 and five eighths. And we'll just double check it down here. times just to make triple sure all right 47 and 5 8 for the uh, for the tip one all right cool all right so the last thing I did was I actually uh, just made myself a little two by four that I can stick in the in the jig here. This will be used to uh, clamp the uh, plywood in there. Just round it off the nose on that a little bit. And I've noticed that my bare thing is now ready for a second coat. Um, soaked in, soaked into that first that first coat. Soaked in really nice. So um, that's what I want to see. I want to see it almost all soak in. Then you know that you're really penetrating the wood nicely. The second coat will top it off. And uh, yeah, and so I think that'll be it for today. Um, next time you see me, we'll be putting some plywood in there that's been soaked in water and um, getting that whole process going. So, all right, um, thanks so much for checking out the video. I do appreciate it. And uh, I wanna say welcome to all you new subscribers. And if you're not, uh, uh, if you're not subscribed, I invite you to do so so you don't miss any of these. And um, I'll catch you later.